welcome here. So, take your freaky cult elsewhere, and don't you dare equate your pathetic cause with the extermination of six million Jews in Germany in World War II. Thank you. She was recently honored by the White House as a champion of change. She is a former captain in the U.S. Army, and she still currently serves as the Vice Executive Director of American Women Veterans. She is a family nurse practitioner here in Albuquerque. Please join me in welcoming Michelle Rasikoff. say thank you to all of you amazing people who are here today. I have some thoughts and I need to let you know what I've been seeing. First, a brief introduction. Of course, my name is Michelle Rassicott. You'll never spell my last name and that's okay. But I am a family nurse practitioner here in Albuquerque and this is my home. Prior to returning home, I was a captain in the United States Army and I served as a flight and trauma nurse in Iraq and Afghanistan. I came here to speak today about my experiences while deployed and the unfortunate correlation I see unfolding in our city today. While in Afghanistan, I helped build a provincial reconstruction team and I helped build clinics for women throughout the city of Ghazni and small impoverished towns. We made sure women had the right to have reproductive choices, even in a country like Afghanistan. I also participated in dismounted patrols. That's right, I am a combat veteran. I patrolled the streets and spent time on various missions providing that health care to orphanages and outlying clinics. And above all else, I took care of our soldiers, a privilege not many people have. What concerns me today is that the proponents of this ballot initiative to ban access to abortions are using tactics similar to what I saw when I was deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan, which includes the use of intimidation, fear, and harassment, and utmost violence. These out-of-state and out-of-touch groups compare a safe medical procedure to the Holocaust. They instill fear in the public by using inaccurate and fake images. And they harass our medical providers in their homes. These tactics are only one way to instill fear and intimidation. And we as New Mexicans need to reject this at all costs. When I return home, I expect to come home to my home. I graduated from here with that woman from Manzano. I'm a monarch. I expected to serve as a family nurse practitioner and to keep giving back to my community like I was raised to do. However, what's been going on has made me concerned. So I, as a medical provider, a veteran, a daughter, a sister, and your friend, I'm asking you to do things as a community together. The first, I want you to ensure the safety of our city members and work with the police department to stop these techniques. Each time you see anything that can be perceived as an intimidation, I want you to call it and report it immediately. Call Chief Allen Banks, call the mayor, tell them it's their duty to keep our community safe. We must work together as a community to make sure that we stay safe. And secondly, I want you to show your respect to Albuquerque women by publicly standing with us to reject this. We as citizens of Albuquerque believe that every pregnancy is different, and making a decision to end a pregnancy is a deeply personal and often complex decision. Respecting New Mexico families, 
students are expecting the real life. And let me say this again, real life decisions that women and their families make in the privacy of their own homes. We must trust them to make the decisions that's best for themselves and their loved ones. And thank you very much for supporting all women and all families that are here in New Mexico, our home today. that Jerry Small is here from the, uh, the New Mexico Museum, Ho Holocaust Museum, Holocaust and Intolerance Museum. Jerry, if you want to wave, good to see you. Jerry invites all of you to come to 616 Central. 616 Central is where the museum is. Come and see the museum. Next, I would like to introduce to you someone. Sarah Koplick is a lifelong resident of Albuquerque. One of her earliest memories is of picketers surrounding her home because her father was one of New Mexico's first legal abortion providers in our state. Dr. Koplick, may his memory be a blessing. She has a doctorate in Jewish history and is the director of community outreach for the Jewish Federation of New Mexico. And in that role, she runs the program for Jewish college students and edits New Mexico's only Jewish newspaper. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Koplick. Thank you all. Good afternoon. Today I am speaking with you in my professional capacity as a representative of New Mexico's Jewish community, but also as the daughter of one of New Mexico's first legal abortion providers. Yeah. My father, Dr. Lewis Henry Koplick, was a brave man. Like so many abortion providers across the U.S., he was deeply committed to providing women with skilled and compassionate care, despite the many personal risks. He was courageous, willing to testify at the legislature and speak openly to the media. And I know that he would be very pleased to see so many of you here today standing up and speaking out. Let me be perfectly clear. The tactics of these extremist anti-choice groups are wrong. The Jewish Federation of New Mexico finds the spurious comparison between abortion and genocide deeply offensive. There is no moral equivalency between the policies of the Third Reich and a woman's private medical decisions. There is no comparison. Such an attempt is grossly inappropriate. It belittles the Holocaust. It is offensive to the remnant who survived the destruction of European Jewry and to those whose families perished, like my father-in-law who lost every single member of his extended family. Let me be perfectly clear. The attempt to appropriate the language and the imagery of the Holocaust is abhorrent to the entire Jewish community. to all those communities who have endured genocide, the systematic destruction of an entire people for no other reason than to wipe them off the face of the earth. To be honest, the deep vein of intolerance found within these anti-choice groups, whose names are so offensive I will not even repeat them again here, it actually surprised me. The last time I saw it directed again, so strongly against the Jewish community was in 1989, when a Catholic anti-choice group decided to picket a synagogue on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. They chose that approach because my father, the abortion provider, was a member of the congregation, and also because our rabbi helped to escort women into an abortion clinic. Last week I was shocked to learn that after these young Californian visitors effectively stormed the Holocaust Museum, harangued volunteers, and left their propaganda throughout the building, that the next day they headed to the home of a Jewish physician to pick it. Interestingly, in 
the course of this protest, they also called upon the family to convert to Christianity. And you know, I thought we had made some progress since the 15th century. Because scaring people half to death is just not a healthy way to get them to join your religion. But seriously, for those of us who work really hard to further the cause of tolerance and religious pluralism in our state, this creates further distrust and division. It's a shame that these young, out-of-state protesters didn't take advantage of their time spent within the Holocaust Museum. If they had, they could have learned some important lessons from the terrible medievals of the upheavals of the mid-20th century, like words matter. Hate speech can quickly escalate to acts of terrible violence, and they can destroy the very fabric of civil society. And this is why we are here today. We condemn acts of violence against those who seek or provide abortion care. The harassment, intimidation, and threats must stop. The overwhelming majority of American Jews support a woman's right to choose, and the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, the policy and community relations arm of the Jewish Federation system, unequivocally supports a woman's legal right to reproductive justice and to adequately, adequately fund family pr planning programs, both in the U.S. and abroad. Now, in halakha, in Jewish religious law, there is no unanimity of opinion on the issue of abortion. In fact, we oftentimes disagree with one another. This is part of our strength and part of the reason why we've survived for over three millennia. Because we have room for a myriad of beliefs and practices. In closing, I want to share the recent words of Werner Gellert, an elderly gentleman, gentleman who escaped from Nazi Germany and founded our city's Holocaust Museum. In response to this protest, he said, I just wish everyone would respect each other. My father of blessed memory would certainly agree. Thank you all. Next, I'm delighted to introduce to you the policy advocate for Planned Parenthood New Mexico. Please welcome Juliana Kuhn. Thank you. Let's wave those pink signs in the air. I see so many of them. Thank you, Planned Parenthood supporters and all of you. Planned Parenthood Votes New Mexico is really proud to be here today and to stand with respect AlbuquerqueWomen.org, the campaign that's working to defeat this horrible initiative. We understand that these decisions are incredibly personal, they're complex, and politicians, government, and out-of-touch groups have no business in them. Now we also know that these kind of attacks against women's health are happening all across the country, from North Carolina to Wisconsin to Texas. These, this is relentless. These attacks are relentless. And we understand that just in the United States of America, in the first three months of 2013, over 350 bills, proposed laws, were initiated in the United States of America to restrict an access to a woman's to a woman's right to get an abortion. And now these efforts are right here in our own backyard. And we stand with all of you in saying, no, we're not going to accept this. Let's be clear about the opponents, these proponents of the, of the ballot initiative and the people who are pushing this. Let's be clear about what their agenda is. They want to ban all abortions and overturn Roe versus Wade. There's no two way about two ways about it. This is a thank you. That's right. This is a coordinated strategy by politicians and out of touch groups to end safe and illegal end legal abortions, and we will not allow it. When women seek an abortion later in pregnancy, we know this. We understand this. But we need to make sure the public knows this. When women seek an abortion later in pregnancy, they're dealing with heartbreaking circumstances. 
and they need to know with their doctor every option, every medical option that they have available to them. This, thank you. This abortion ban has nothing to do with protecting women. It's overreaching and quite frankly it's dangerous. Planned Parenthood Votes New Mexico urges all of you to go to respectabqwomen.org, respectabqwomen.org, and sign up to volunteer as we reach out to voters and tell them the truth. Also, there are people going through the crowd right now, and Denicia is right here with pledge cards. And we're going to ask that you sign that pledge and standing with the women and families of New Mexico to say, go home. This ballot initiative will not happen here. Thank you. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. I think Gandalf said it best, and I think he was talking about this ballot initiative. It shall not pass. Not here. Not in New Mexico. Uh, next, I would like to invite up to the microphone another student leader in the organization called Young Women United. Please welcome Micaela Cabrera and her translator, Tanya Espasa. Please welcome. Everyone. Uh, my name is Tania Esparza. I'm the Executive Director at Young Women United, and I will continue to give my remarks in Spanish. Mi nombre es Tania Esparza, directora de la organización Young Women United, Mujeres Jóvenes Unidas, basada aquí en Albuquerque. Estamos aquí como parte de la campaña llamada Albuquerque Respeta a la Mujer para urgir a la comunidad que diga no a la propuesta que limitaría el acceso al aborto legal y seguro. Como mujeres latinas y mujeres de color, sabemos muy bien cómo los derechos de nuestras comunidades han sido violados. Igual que la gran mayoría de la comunidad latina, yo también estoy firme en que solo nosotras tenemos el derecho de, de hacer estas decisiones tan íntimas y complejas. Un estudio reciente encontró que 74% de, la, de los latinos que votan están de acuerdo en que una mujer pueda hacer decisiones sobre su cuerpo y el aborto si, sin la in interferencia del gobierno. Nuestra, nuestras comunidades y familias son poderosas y tenemos la sabiduría y la experiencia para saber que lo que es mejor para el bienestar de nuestras propias familias. Nosotras debemos de continuar haciendo estas decisiones. El gobierno no tiene lugar en esto. Sabemos que la elección todavía no tiene fecha, pero estamos organizando con nuestras comunidades y estamos preparadas para actuar en contra de esta propuesta al lado de nuestras familias y comunidades. Juntos y juntas somos más fuertes. Good afternoon, my name is Micaela Cadena. I'm the policy director at Young Women United. I'm proud that today I'm standing here besides our executive director, Tanya, so that we could share our remarks in both English and Spanish. Our organization, our movement, and this struggle is multilingual, multiracial, and crosses many social justice issues. We are here as part of the Respect Albuquerque Women campaign. As Albuquerque families, we say no to the proposed ballot measure that would limit access to safe and legal abortion. As Latino women and as women of color, we know very well how the rights of our families and communities have been historically violated and disrespected. Like the great majority of Latino communities, I understand that only we have the right to make these complex and intimate decisions for ourselves and our families. In recent polling, 
74% of Latinos who vote agree that a woman has the right to make these decisions about her body and abortion without interference of the government. Our communities and our families are powerful. We carry the wisdom and experience to know what is best for the health and well-being of our own families and loved ones. We need to continue to make these important decisions for ourselves. Government doesn't have a place in our decisions about our bodies and lives. We are organizing alongside our communities. Whenever this election happens, we will be ready to vote against this proposal. We, New Mexico women, families, and allies are building a campaign, Respect Albuquerque Women, to ensure that in our state we maintain access to safe and legal abortion. The decision to end a pregnancy is deeply personal and often complex. We cannot stand in a woman's shoes and cannot make these decisions for her. To be clear, women's access to health care, our bodies and lives, should not be used as political grandstanding. Our Our Albuquerque voters and families deserve more. Our body should not be used as pawns in an ideological battle or a debate between pro-life and pro-life and pro-choice positions. We must put the rights and well-being of New Mexico women and families first. You can find our campaign at www.respectabqwomen.org or on Facebook at Respect ABQ Women or the Twitter handle at the same uh, name. Vote no on the Albuquerque Bezit ballot measure designed to limit access to safe and legal abortion. We are stronger together. Thank you. This is for Young Women United. so much going on around Albuquerque regarding this issue. There are people here from all over the country, including folks from something called the Abortion Rights Freedom Ride. And I'm going to ask them to wave. They're over there. They'd love to meet you. Please go meet them. They're all the way from San Francisco. They came all the way here. They're driving all night long to be with us today. Thank you for being here. The next person I'm bringing up to the stage one of my very best friends, and she's also, uh, she's delivered more than 800 babies in the state of New Mexico. This woman, she is a midwife, a mother, a family nurse practi practitioner, and she has dedicated her life to women, mothers, and babies. Please join me in welcoming Mary Lou Singleton. I just want to thank everyone for coming. This is an amazing turnout. Thank you for showing up to support women and healthcare providers and to stand in support with the sol and solidarity with the Jewish community. I'm speaking, I'm speaking today as a women's healthcare provider, but I'm also speaking as someone who was raised in the anti-choice movement. My parents were the co-chairs of Pennsylvanians for Human Life. My sister was a member of Operation Rescue. Uh, I know the arguments of the anti-choice movement forward and backward because the talking points of that movement were the daily discourse in my home while growing up. <laughs> like the teenagers who came to town and bullied women at clinics and harassed our Holocaust Museum and terrorized a doctor's family in their private residence, as a child I also believed what my parents and authority figures told me about abortion. And then I grew up. <laughs> and I became a midwife. And I really fully began to understand the complicated reality of women's lives. Over one third of the women I served as a midwife had at some time in, in their lives made a decision to have an abortion. And they all had very good reasons for doing so. And they were obviously not murderers. They were loving, compassionate, intelligent people 
who had made the appropriate choice for themselves and their families. Because I love and care for the health of women, I want to talk to you about abortion. I want to explain to you that the ballot measure being pushed on our town by out-of-state religious extremists will hurt women's lives. This measure is being billed as a referendum on late-term abortion, but any woman who's been pregnant can tell you that 20 weeks is not late-term. 20 weeks is right in the middle of pregnancy, which lasts an average of 40 weeks. 20 weeks is also the point in pregnancy when women carrying fetuses with problems often begin to get very sick because sick pregnancies frequently result in sick mothers. Some of these women become so sick, it becomes necessary to end the pregnancy to save their lives. If this ballot measure passes, women will be forced to carry these potentially life-threatening pregnancies to term. 20 weeks is also the point in pregnancy where it becomes possible to diagnose severe and often lethal birth defects. On multiple occasions, I've been the midwife for a woman who's just found out that her baby, her very, very wanted baby, is missing a brain or kidneys or lungs and cannot survive outside of the womb. I have sat and comforted these women as they made the agonizing decision of what to do at that point in the pregnancy in such horrible circumstances. While every woman's choice may be different, I can say from deep within my heart that no one has the right to make that decision but the woman carrying that pregnancy. If this ballot initiative passes, our city will have decided that we have the right to force these women to carry pregnancies, which will inevitably end in heartbreak and tragedy. And we're telling them they have to carry these pregnancies for another five months. <clears throat> we will see cases like the one in El Salvador this spring, where a woman with lupus was carrying a baby without a brain, a baby with anencephaly who could not survive outside of the womb. And the woman was in kidney failure from the pregnancy. And she was refused a life-saving abortion because the state that the country of El Salvador, a Catholic country, has laws like this ballot initiative that ban abortion after 20 weeks unless the mother is imminently dying on the table. This ballot measure would endanger women's lives in ways that should terrify even women who really believe they would never personally choose to have an abortion. If this measure passes, women will be denied life-saving care if they are miscarrying after 20 weeks and the fetus still has a heartbeat. What this means is that women will die. The world just witnessed this last year when a 31-year-old dentist in Ireland died because the country's laws, which were similar to this ballot measure, forbade doctors from intervening when she was miscarrying. If this ballot measure passes, women could also be denied chemotherapy and radiation should they be diagnosed with cancer if they're more than 20 weeks pregnant. Last year, a pregnant teenager in the Dominican Republic, another Catholic country which bans all abortion, died of leukemia after being denied cancer treatment on the grounds that chemotherapy would harm the fetus she was carrying. These laws are horrific. I ask all of you to work together to defeat this ballot measure and to protect the lives of women. Medical decisions should not be made in the ballot, in the ballot box and in the voting booth. Thank you all so much. I hope you feel fired up. Do you feel fired up? Operation Rescue is a hateful organization. They need to leave. Operation Rescue, go home! No! Operation Rescue, go home! No! Go home! Operation Rescue, go home! No! We are not Wichita. We will not sit idly and allow you to protest 24 hours a day, seven days a week outside our doctor's homes until some crazy person is incited to so much violence that they murder the doctor. And that's what happened to Dr. Tiller. To the man who's here from Operation Rescue, Bud Shaver, do you know that he gave a speech at the pulpit of Dr. Tiller's church? He outed the church. Do you know where Dr. Tiller was murdered? In church. This is not a 
joke. This is not a, oh, flippant, we use the word terrorism. This is a domestic terrorist organization. And we want them to go home. You do not belong in Albuquerque. Go home. Take your foolish words that you think you can get out of our, our dockets and go home. They're unconstitutional. Go home, Operation Rescue. Go home. You are out of state. You are out of touch. You are full of hate, and you need to go home. Please remember that. Carry that message around, because I've been shocked to talk to my friends who are radicals, and I say the word Operation Rescue, and they say, huh, who's that? No, they're not going to say, huh, who's that? We're going to tell them who they are. They are inciters of violence. They are purveyors of hatred. They are people who bring down communities, and they are going to be going home. Goodbye, Operation Rescue, and hello, all the cookie coaches. Stick together, and we will defeat this violent initiative. And I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to come out today and make a stand to support doctors, midwives, mothers, healthcare practitioners, and our Jewish community. Because we are not going to be terrorized. You are going to go home, Operation Rescue. This is our city. This is our state.